You are watching the Escape Adulthood Live, your number one source for long-lasting, fast-acting, physician-approved adultitis relief. On this week's show, we're talking about Play-Doh, googly eyes, and what to do when the world feels overwhelmingly out of control. Greetings and salutations, dear friends. Yes, thank you for shenanigating with us on this wonderful hump day evening. Um, I don't know what the weather is like wherever you guys are, but oh my gosh, this is like the best weather. <sighs> Waited Madison, a long time for this weather right? in Wisconsin. We did a big bike ride today, and I see uh, lots of other people have done a lot of fun things. What do we got? Some cardboard action, and uh. I hear uh, watching my granddaughters catch toads. Aww, that's fun. Um, what else Lots we got? Lots of cool. We got from, uh, shout out from Scottsdale. Helen says she loves Play-Doh. Thank you for being here so early, you guys. I see Dorothy and Ben and Paul and Lauren <laughs> and Mary Steve, Beth. Steve says I tried to help a spider escape from my uh -oh. sink by giving it a couple lifelines. It hasn't worked <laughs> yet. Yeah, that's, you know, all you can do. All you can do right? is help. So I don't know what today is going to hold because we're, we've had a busy run. It's, it's been crazy. Last night we had our opening ceremony for the Wonder and Whimsy Society. Yep. So I felt like today was uh, Thursday because last night felt like Wednesday because we did it at 745 and the whole But thing. we also had a uh, virtual program yesterday. buck early in the morning yesterday mm -hmm. um, for an awesome client that we worked with yes. several times in Southern Illinois. So if anyone's mm -hmm. watching from Effingham, yes. hello everyone. Thanks for tuning in. My favorite city that I've ever spoken just because Effingham. I love saying that. <laughs> Going down to Effingham again. You sound yeah. so mad. Like you're <laughs> no. just like love ready love to it. cuss, but you're not love quite going to cuss. You know, <laughs> it's like uh, Sheboygan or Oshkosh, one of those right. good Menominee, Oconomowoc, right? some great Wisconsin cities. It's, do other states have these fun city names? I'm sure. I'm I sure know. there's always every tell state has fun. its own. I mean, if you have a fun name near you, like tell us. Because what was the one where Jamie used to live? Schenectady? Oh, sh sh I can't even say it. Schenectady, Schenectady, New York. <laughs> I don't know. Fun to nothing. say if you can say it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we we had some fun last week for sure. We asked people what mm -hmm. what they've been doing today, and um, we've been doing some cool things with yes, the kids. The kids. We got this inspiration to make play doh. I don't know where this really came from, to be honest. But um, I reached out to one of our fellow adult adultitis fighters and Wonder and Whimsy members, Christy Ward, who happens to be. Uh, you know, preschool, early childhood guru. Okay. So I said, well, okay, where's the best Play-Doh recipe? She's like, of course, just like you would think, ooey gooey lady. So Lisa, Lisa Murphy, who we had on maybe about a month ago now. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went to her website, got this. And so we tried it out. And Ben is our chef in the, in the family, if you don't know that by now. Does it take so. a chef to make Play-Doh? No, it doesn't. But look, at he's always the lead on the, yeah, at the he's stove, in there. you know? And I have to tell you, feel this. I mean, it's cool, Ooh, right? This I might know. be the best, right? Non-commercially made. Does you would expect actually, nothing less the from smell, Lisa Murphy? Well, we put better than smell I expected. in it. I put what essential is? oils in, in them, so the kids got to. to um, Don't you guys choose. wish there was smell a vision here? I mean, <laughs> like just. Well, we have mint, and then we have, or peppermint, and we have orange flavor from some essential oils I had laying around. Um, but yeah, right? This all this is, I know. This okay. is really, really good. So if you guys want the recipe, can we throw up the email? Um, email me, and I'll send it over. And by the um, way, yeah, this right printout had, it was like a five-page printout with other recipes. So we also made flubber the other day, which was disgusting. I was so grossed out. Yeah, it had so, a weird. It, it had weird. a really. It weird. The only one that loved it was Ro. She played with it for like two hours. The rest of us were like, "Oh, I can't do it. It's so weird." So anyway, we have some sensory issues in the house. But here's um, the mixing the colors. They want to mix colors. All want to do the different colors. And so we brought out the gloves that we had bought for COVID, and everybody did a different color. Um, it was fun. This, it was super fun. I'm gonna tell you right now. This is the best. Yeah. 
Play-Doh. Awesome. That's not Play-Doh I've ever And it's a week old. Experienced. So that's the other that's thing good. is like yeah, how good. how uh, soft it still is. So and, uh, yeah, they made I, uh, these little dudes. What's the story between these guys? This was a little family that Lucy got going on. And you can see the little baby is so cute. And the little glasses, the glasses that she kind of imprinted. Deep. Um, so they were just having fun. This was like oh, several hours of fun, you guys. So I want to challenge, you know, we're going to be talking later about this book, the, the rules that don't exist, um, that came out a few years ago. Penguins can't fly. I want to challenge us to think are is Play-Doh. Can you only make Play-Doh if for young children? And I think that is ridiculous. That's completely but, ridiculous. But let's actually ask the question. Would you consider it as an option for normal Yourself. adults yeah heck yes i did <laughs> <laughs> heck yes i did uh well i i wanted to pull up here because we got some yeah, uh people go. talking about where some weird towns mm. um i got first i gotta take this down so we have room to see stuff so beth uh talks of hell michigan seriously yeah there's oh a hell my michigan gosh. that'd be kind of fun the ben, mascot's gotta be great ben <laughs> says we are next to fruitland it's great <laughs> Fruitland. Oh, uh, that was cool. the other one I saw. Brenda. Oh, boy. Oh, Con Conshohoken. Conshohoken. Wow. That's cool. Sure, I butchered that. I'm not even going to try that one. <laughs> um, yeah, so we got some fun fun ones there. Uh, but the, all this Play-Doh talk. Oh, um, what's that one that Steven says in, in uh, ooh, here Washington? Ohana Pekosh. Ohana Pekosh. That one with a P-Y? Also, oh, that's intimidating. Pish, right there. Pish, pish. Wish we could hear you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no one wants this to hear me pronounce it. doesn't good. It this. just reads badly. Uh, mean, so anyway, all this talk about Play-Doh inspired us to put together a new segment, which we are calling Time Machine. Okay, so obviously, if you are watching this and you don't know or remember Play-Doh, I'm not sure what planet you live on. <laughs> but I wanted to uh, share a couple interesting facts about Play-Doh as I was gonna, doing some research. While you read that, I'm going to make like the classic Play-Doh worm. The snake. Or snake or whatever you want to you As you should. <laughs> so fun facts. Play-Doh was actually in homes for at least 20 years before being considered a plaything. Did you know that? No. You might wonder, what was it before it was a plaything? Right. It was marketed and sold solely for another purpose, wallpaper cleaner. What? Yep. In the late 1920s, Cleo McVicker, they don't make names like that McVicker. anymore. <laughs> Cleo McVicker was working for a Cincinnati-based soap company. The company was close to going out of business when, in 1933, he negotiated a contract with Kroger Grocery Stores to manufacture ready-made wallpaper cleaner to be marketed and sold in their stores. Hmm. Although they had never made wallpaper cleaner before, which I love. They're going out of business. <laughs> and they're like, uh, let's, we'll make this for you. Yeah, let's, hey, you give, last straw, That's right? called tinkering right there. <laughs> yeah. So Cleo and his brother Noah, a product developer, came up with a winning formula. The result was a non-toxic, malleable clay-like compound. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Made with, with from water, salt, and flour that kept the company afloat and successful for another 20 years. Well, as is a surprise to no one, in the early 1950s, sales of wallpaper cleaner began to plummet. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Following Cleo's death in 1949, his son Joseph McVicker took over the business and faced the challenge of keeping the company going. McVicker's sister-in-law, a school teacher, convinced him to think about their product as a handicraft and play object. Hmm. So in 1956, McVicker established Rainbow Crafts Company, which repackaged the product, now known as Play-Doh, and marketed it to elementary schools in the greater Cincinnati area. Mm -hmm. 1957, they had three colors. Do you know, guess what they were? The primary colors, red, yellow, blue. Very good. Ah! Well, here's the thing. McVicker wanted his product to reach a larger audience, not just schools, mm -hmm. but he lacked a substantial advertising budget. Story of my life. <laughs> His creativity prevailed once again when he introduced his new line of Play-Doh to Bob Keeshan. Do you know who that is, Kim? I would guess it's somebody that owns a big company. Well, he's known to the television world as Captain <gasps> Kangaroo. 
Oh. Keishan loved the product and made an arrangement with McVicker to use Play-Doh oh. at least once a week on his show. That's tremendous. That's amazing. On the most popular children's television show of its time, a big break. Captain Kangaroo catapulted Play-Doh into the national spotlight. Huh. Sales skyrocketed. What? Fun fact, you guys. In December, I was just thinking this. Yeah. we have an interview lined up with someone who helped design the set. Of Captain Kangaroo. He is also known as the King of Whimsy. That's the only hint I'm going to give you right now, but you're going to want to yeah. tune in for that. That'd be awesome. Uh, what else do we got? Well, in 1960, accessories became part of the Play-Doh line when McVicker hired two engineers to develop a product that could be used in multiple ways. The result was the hugely popular Fun Factory. Oh, Some of you may remember yes. this. That with min, I like yeah. they said with minimal force would extrude Play-Doh <laughs> into various shapes Minimal and designs. Force. I know, we have some of those kind of things here. So don't use too much force, just minimal. minimal. Just, okay. just minimal force. I do love doing that, like pushing that through. Yep. Mm -hmm. So currently, you may know now that Hasbro uh, currently manufactures Play-Doh. It's estimated that since the product was officially introduced in 1955, more than two billion cans of play-doh have been sold worldwide oh my gosh wow that's so unbelievable what when you when you hear the description of like um wallpaper what was it wallpaper cleaner, cleaner. what does that even mean <laughs> you know that's a good question and i uh i actually read that and it went right out of my okay. head you know i, I just was like know I well. i've never applied wallpaper care. we have pulled wallpaper off of my mom's bathroom but I don't know maybe I'll about the maybe uh, someone can do some some quick Google searching for us because I oh, this is so smooth. You have to play with this. I, I will. Okay. Well, I'm doing a segment. Oh, here, okay. All right. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, so, we anyway. wanted to bring this up for a couple reasons. The first reason is because uh, uh, adultitis fighter. Um, I'm not sure. I think he's watching tonight. Actually, Paul Tracy out in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, I believe. Um, <laughs> this is gonna be a it's gonna be a doozy. You guys I, might want to share this right now because you might see something that you won't <laughs> see again and didn't want to see. This is like okay, sangria meets play doh. Like that's interesting. Don't drink in play doh, you guys. It's, only bad things can happen. Uh, oh, Paul is present. Yes, Paul oh, is Paul, present. Okay, Paul. Paul. Well, I want to give Focus you a shout him. out. I want to give you a shout out. Thank you. That's what Ro does Ka to me. She's Kathy like, Rose is Focus, keeping things Mom. on task. <clears throat> For the third time, Paul, shout out to you because I don't. Was this on Facebook? I think he wrote this. Um, he was. He had a great. Meta, yeah, it might have been in the Escape at All the League. I'm not sure. Uh, but he suggested a thing about Play-Doh. Great metaphor. He said, it's been a weird year, but think about the Play-Doh squeeze toys. Sometimes you need a little pressure to make something fun, different, and unique happen. Mm -hmm. isn't, that, isn't that a great like sentiment? You can Sometimes tell you need a little a, pressure to make something fun, such different, such and unique heart, happen. Paul. I know. That is such a good metaphor. It is. It's good, true. Because we've, I mean, we, we've all had a little pressure. This show is something that has come out of the pressure. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. And just for a shout out, I, I think my parents might be watching tonight because I pay them to. And uh, <laughs> I know my mom will love to hear this reference again, but my all time her eyes right favorite <laughs> toy as a child was the Fuzzy Pumper Barbershop. And with minimal force, I you it was could- Fuzzy Bumper. No, it's Pumper because you're pumping, you're I pumping. Know. You know, like when I go to the barber, I, I like to get <laughs> pumped up. Um, it's a Pump different it story. Up. Pump up the but yeah, it was the coolest because you'd, yeah. with minimal force, you'd put this in here and you'd pump it up and the hair would extrude. Mm -hmm. Love that word, extrude out. Mm -hmm. And then you had you could, you know, shave it and yeah. have little scissors and He's stuff. So but cute. The, oh my gosh. The problem was I think I get to play with it one time because my mom said it was too messy. I probably got Play-Doh in the carpet and it dried. That's the story. That's what I hear. Um, so, well, if I remember your kitchen, you guys had carpet under the kitchen table. So that's not my fault. No, like but the that whole is house a fact, is carpet. A carpeted. fact that if I were defending her, which well, I am in this, this moment, yeah, 
carpet under the kitchen table I, and I think this was actually right. I think this was actually in our very first house which oh. I'll be talking about later which I think was linoleum and but you were uh, so small how would you remember that well it's, comment, why would you Linda, hold it against comment, me I don't know defend yourself I think it's <laughs> clearly I think any parent... My mom dropped the ball. No, I'm just gonna say no, no. Any parent who has cleaned up Play-Doh out of, especially carpet, but really anything, is like, that's enough. We don't have to do that anymore. So I get it. I get it. We would have a classroom of 25 kids playing Play-Doh at the same time. It was a nightmare. But Then fun. why get me this amazing <laughs> toy? That's the great dichotomy of life. Best toy ever received. Um, uh, yeah. But Kim Kim says we had carpet and I hid the play doh. So there's yes. there's a vote for my mom, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Jill need a toothpick to clean it every time. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the thing. That, the spe- yeah, the, the spe- <laughs> no, that, it's just mean, funny yeah. how you say that. That toothpick. Like, oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> so true, so true. Uh, uh oh, we got Team Jason. Kelsey says I had play doh hair salon to oh, '90s version. Nice. Yeah, I think they called it hair salon, hair salon. later okay. once it was the fuzzy bumper barber <laughs> shop. So yeah, I mean, what what are we voting on here? Just the fact that my mom was mean, <laughs> and you don't think she was? <laughs> Not the vote. No, I think there's just a certain level of uh, forgiveness that happens where you feel maybe some injustice for not being able to play play fuzzy pumper enough. And okay, you want to lay down on a couch? Would you get more comfortable? I I just, I think my childhood was lacking. I I don't know why (laughs) an adult. Uh oh, here comes Linda. That's what she's saying. He lies. I don't think we need to show that. What's he say? Oh, can't see it. No! Let's take this down. He lies. He lies. Oh, was allowed God. to play at the kitchen table. <laughs> I, I I don't remember it. I don't well, remember. A lot One, of memories you don't have before sh- age six. This is fake news. So I, <laughs> she she let me play it once. I remember playing it once. That's how I know I loved it. Oh. And then, well, never again. Never again. Well, I have a confession to make because I am guilty of the exact same thing with the Easy Bake Oven. We got, someone got, I don't know where we got this Easy Bake Oven. Maybe Santa brought it. Lucy, we did it. It was a nightmare experience. The new modern day Easy Bake Oven is not the one you remember, you guys. Do not buy it for anyone. No. It is horrible. It barely lit. It was like a light bulb that barely even warmed the food. So it kind of disappeared. And the kids recently were like, where did our Easy Bake Oven go? Where did it go? I'm like, that is a piece of trash that made its way to the garbage. We just let the kids use the (laughs) oven now. That just regular oven. So I'm with you. I mean, if that happened, Linda, I'm totally with you because sometimes things just disappear and you don't know what happened to it. Classic daughter-in-law sucking up. <laughs> That's all this is about right here. All right. Well, Mom's a mom. we'll, move, what it is. we'll move things on from here. And uh, we've got a word from our sponsor. And now a word from our sponsors. All right, guys, we talked to that. We we're going to mention this, but this, uh, the Penguins Can't Fly book, many of you know it by now. Um, oops, where is it going? Over here. Well, it's right in the middle of the I screen. Know. Also. <laughs> it really is a book, in case you wanted to know. Um, obviously, this is the book that made Marty so, you know, beloved, um, our little Marty mascot. But we're going to kind of put these up as a little deal right now, mainly because we keep getting requests for virtual programs um, on this topic. People are telling me that, okay, guys, we, you know, we've kind of made the pivot. We're, you know, we're kind of evolving. However, Shock is over. Yes. Right. Now we actually need some real thoughts on how to think different. And that's what this book is all about, Charlie Brown. I mean, 39 other, like penguins can't fly plus 39 other rules that don't exist. It's all about breaking out of these like stuck ruts of thinking. Um, and so, yeah, so we're like, let's so do it. So what's the deal? The deal is 10 for a hundred. Yeah. $10 a piece. They yeah. are normally $17. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you buy 10 of them, yes. but this is not a deal on our website. You have to email yeah. us and we'll hook so you up. Minimum special. Of 10. Minimum of 10. Yeah. But yep. you can buy 20, 30, whatever, but yeah. we're going to make $10 each. And just send us an email and we'll get you a PayPal invoice and we'll get it off to you right away. But they all come with Marty. So don't forget about that. Yeah. So the um, 10 Martys with 10 books, 10 Martys. I, I think bonus. a lot of people know people right now that need a little pick me up. 
And so if you are the giving type or you have a group that needs a little new way of thinking to break out of rules that don't exist, maybe maybe it'll fit. So sweet. Yeah, I'm <laughs> done with that. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. So the house I whoops, I need to start over here. There we go. So the house I grew up on was across the street from a um, fire station. And although it was a pretty small town, there wasn't a lot of action most days. Uh, it only took one siren in the middle of the night to wail uh, for a three-year-old to be terrified for the rest of his life. So every single night, uh, I had this routine with my dad when he would tuck me down and I would uh, have to say this statement. I would say, Dad... I am afraid of the thunder and the lightning and the fire trucks every night. And every night he would calmly answer the same thing. He would say, that's okay, Jason. They're all in bed now. That was it. That's all I needed to hear. You needed to hear it every night, but uh, that's all I needed to hear to have a perfect night's sleep. And that's the thing. When we're young, the world is noisy and overwhelming. It feels too big for us. Um, fortunately, our parents... Uh, as much grief as we give them, they always have our back. They uh, reassure us, help us feel safe, and it's comforting to let them take care of all of the scary stuff, you know, because they've been around the block a while. They're big and strong, and they know everything. And as we get older, you know, our courage grows. We bravely venture out into the world on our own, exploring new things, and we, uh, we get confidence, and we slowly build our uh, self-sufficiency. But there are the times when things get a little bit too scary or we fall and skin our knee and we go racing back to mom and dad to a place we know is safe. Well, eventually, as many of you know, you reach the point where your parents are no longer with you. Or maybe you catch up with them and are you, you're finally surprised to realize that they don't actually know everything in the world. What then? Well, I don't know about you, but there are still times when the world feels too big for me. The noise, the pain, the problems, it's all too much. And yes, I am looking at you, 2020, the flaming dumpster fire only its mother could love. We've experienced a pandemic, lockdowns, economic downturns, unrest, unrest in our cities, natural disasters, all of this in a contentious election year. It's been overwhelming, constantly trying to figure things out. Again, that's the, the word we keep coming back to is overwhelm, overwhelming, trying to make sense of everything, figure out what I'm supposed to do next for my family or for my business. And the moments I feel most overmatched are the times when I forget that I'm not alone. What has saved me this year has been my morning routine. I've mentioned that in the past a uh, few times, but it's it's been huge. Every single day I wake up, sit in the pre-dawn light in my rocking chair, which makes me sound like a real old guy all of a sudden. I've got my fresh cup of coffee, a pine-scented candle nearby, and I just sit there. I read the Bible, I journal, I pray. Sometimes I listen to music or read from a devotional. Sometimes I just sit there in the quiet before the kids are up and the world turns on for the day. It's bliss. And I never in a million years would have thought that I would be the person who would enjoy getting up that early. But now I wouldn't miss it for the world. It's like I'm a baby polar bear sneaking refuge into the shadow of his protective parent. And many times when I'm sitting there, I'll confide and confess to my heavenly father and I'll say, Lord, I am afraid of the virus and the violence and the division. And he responds over and over again in his word and in the still small voice in my heart. It's okay, Jason. I've got this. Our bodies may grow old, but our souls remain young. We're always God's kids. We're always yearning for love and safety. Our smallness is a gift because it, it leads us back to him. And when we're weak, 
he's strong. My morning my quiet times, they give me just enough to get through each day. I don't often experience any sort of grand revelations, mostly just reminders. When I think, how am I supposed to navigate all of this turmoil, I'm reminded I don't have to. I'm reminded that we were not meant to do this life alone. I'm reminded that I can be brave because I have backup. Maybe you could use a reminder. Maybe you need an invitation. So if you're navigating 2020 like a boss, by all means, keep on keeping on. But if you feel overwhelmed and out of your league, might I suggest seeking refuge in the shelter of your Heavenly Father who loves you very much and has got your back. And when the alarms sound and the sirens wail and the world feels too big for you, remember that you have a mighty champion on your side. Got some cool comments coming in here, Jay. Um, looks like uh, Betsy, the the little line about our your our, our smallness, smallness is a gift. gift. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, you know we talk about that that our our childhood self still lives inside of us, you know, and that's kind of I don't know. You can kind of get messed up in your head to think about that a little bit, but I believe it. I mm -hmm. do because there are times where that childlike spirit comes out and is free and playful and you can kind of get in touch with it again but i think it also is that vulnerable side of us too where you're looking for the comfort that a child would look for um, yeah. that you're talking about yeah and that's i mean that's the thing I've, i i think one of the biggest things i've realized this year is that we are um two individuals who do not like depending on people or relying mm -hmm. on people like yeah. um we like to we don't like to owe people, you know, like, I think that's a common thing for a lot of people, but, um, I think the same way I feel about, you know, my relationship with God is, is the same as like, I'm realizing that, uh, weakness and dependency is the goal, not a flaw, which is not a it's normal, cultural so not a normal thing that right, it's like, that right. I'm, it's not like I'm like check in and then it's like, I'm good for three months and I'll be right. fine. It's like, no, like, you're supposed to be going every day. And so this habit of having done these morning things this has been going on mm -hmm. well over a year now that yeah. we've uh, instituted this mm -hmm. for ourselves. And it has been very uh, helpful for um, this pandemic and all that. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of those things where it's like, I, you know, we sometimes we share about our faith and um, I don't like to impress on anyone what they should or shouldn't believe. But at the same time, like we're trying to share what things have worked in our life from, you know, whether it's playing with Play-Doh uh, or what. And it's like, we, I feel like it'd be kind of like disingenuous to not share the whole picture. So yeah. as with everything that we share, take, uh, take what you want and uh, your mileage may vary, but hopefully <laughs> it's encouraging. And it seems like from uh, some of these comments that they are uh, encouraging. So I'm glad to see that. Thanks, Stephen. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Helen. Good stuff. Yeah, so uh, what's next? I think it's time to draw. Yeah. Time to draw. Get your drawing things out, everyone. Okay, this is gonna be this is gonna be a little different today because it's gonna be not as uh, not as much color. Um, so we're going to do something a little different and it's still going to be fun. So if you have something to draw with, something to draw on, bring it out, have fun with us, even if it's a ballpoint pen or a post-it note. I am using Procreate, which I now officially know is only an, an Apple iPad software, but you can find your own fun thing um, to use however you want. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with this. Uh, we're going to make a, four big bumps at the bottom of the page. I'm going to do, I should say, four bumps, two big ones and two little ones. Mm -hmm. It's going to look like that. Okay. Now I'm going to draw a couple little lines under the two small bumps. Okay. Now we're going to draw a big circle right in the middle, just like that. Okay. 
This is also a good time to share. If you have not shared and you feel um, inspired to do so, it's a cool way to kind of get the word out. So we yeah. appreciate you guys doing that. Okay, so we got this going so far. Pretty simple, right? Very simple. Know, Let's see. We're gonna scratching do, my head I'm here. gonna draw a line right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna draw a lot, like kind of a curvy line that connects here to here, one on each side. Does someone okay. just popped up that we haven't heard from and talked to in like two decades. Oh yeah? Anita Kabilsa. Oh wow. Hi Anita. Good That's to great see to see you, you. Anita. Oh my gosh. Like virtually, I guess. I know. It's, uh, we go back, I mean, I met Anita when I was 16 and um, that was a connecting point to where Jason and I met was through a tech retreat program, Teens Encounter Christ. And that's mm -hmm. literally where we met and that's where we met Anita. So yeah. good to Very see cool. you. Good to see you through the camera. <laughs> so we've got, uh, got, I put some little, little circly things up okay, there. I see, I now see. Now we're coming it's together, coming right? Coming together, yeah. Okay, now all I'm right. going to draw a little shape that kind of, Looks a little bit like a square uh -huh. that's right cool. there and fill in. I leave the top part um, not filled in. Gives it a little bit of a highlight look to it. A little shiny wet nose. A couple of fun cute little eyes on the side here. All right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Then we're going to draw in uh, some lines up here that just kind of bring in the uh, mommy or daddy's legs. And then I'm going to draw a line at the very bottom underneath all of these things. Hmm. Okay. Aww. And then cool. well, my favorite part is I'm going to draw these claws in here. And mm. for these claws, make the bottom part kind of sharp. And I'm going to leave like a little mm. highlight right in the middle. Hmm. By the way, Helen Meisner popped up and says she loves tech. Oh yeah, and REC, and that's how she got involved in prison ministry. Wow, that's amazing! Small world, yeah. I know. Whenever you mention tech, tech is one of those things that if people know it, Curseal, Curseal is the other um, adult version. Um, it, you kind of have a small world moment, don't you? Yeah, it yeah, for sure. It's out there. So oh, that's, okay, that so that's the cool that's the gist of it. And then if you want to just add a little bit of detail, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna color in this. Um, back part here, which is basically kind of, you know, the shadow mm -hmm. of the legs. Oh yeah. And it's kind of one of those things where it's a real, it's kind of a subtle where you're not exactly sure what's going on, but you see those, those mm -hmm. claws, those big claws, and you're like, oh, I see what's going on here. All right. Mm -hmm. And you could put some, uh, you know, little hmm. hair here, making it a little fuzzy. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I bet this was, was kind good. of a tough one to transform into a simple drawing. Yeah, it was. It was, but yeah. uh, it's. I think it's kind of a fun little yeah. simple drawing today um, of this little polar bear. We can't wait seeking to see shelter. your versions. Please share them. We have some um, new people who've shared this week that we're really excited to to be able to send. But please be one of those new people next week and send it over to kj at escapeadulthood.com. Absolutely. All right. So speaking of um, sharing artwork, that's I think that's what we should do now. We're going to we should. Well, I, first I wanted to share. I meant oh, to yeah. show this at the beginning. This is my new Funko Pop, everyone. <laughs> uh, Edward Scissorhands. I've been wanting this. They, they had a, uh, a version that came out a long time ago that was uh, was sold out and it was gone. And it was on eBay for like 200 bucks or oh something like that. So they came lips. out. Look at how detailed his little buckles on are oh on this gosh. little thing. But they came out with crazy. a new version. So this was nine bucks. Wow. So I That's was awesome. like jumped on it because mm -hmm. I was. He was one that I really, really, really wanted. So, uh, but I digress. I want to. I really want to see Scott. I see Scott Burroughs on tonight. Oh, hey, Scott. How's it going, buddy? I want to see your polar bear, Scott. So send us your polar bear. <laughs> yeah. Scott is. Uh, amazingly talented painter uh yeah and Colorado. former disney animator yes. and yeah I, he's so, probably animated polar bears send before us your polar bear we would love to see it yes and now let's see let's see what drawings we got from uh Okay, oh, we got a good man. batch tonight, don't we, Kim? Look at this little guy. 
is Shia. And I love Shia, but you, this is like notebook paper, guys. Like, so don't ever have that excuse. You're like, oh, I don't have anything. I don't have a sketchbook or I don't have a pencil that's sharp. This is adorable. It is. Right? Mission accomplished, right? right? Good job, Shia. Pete Ninevasa. Oh I think I finally figured out how to pronounce his name. I'm, yeah. I'm very, I say it very confidently as if I am getting it right. But Let us know, yeah, I, you know, I don't know if you noticed this, Kim, but he's got this little guy has not only has a bow tie, but he's got a little Escape Adulthood logo oh on his chest. There's he a little does. paper airplane there. So oh, the detail the is spectacular, is right? And Stephen, Stephen yeah. is a regular contributor. I think Love every week words, Stephen, Stephen sends something in. I gotta say, this might be my favorite one that he sent in. I don't know if it's, it's the combination of the whimsy, yeah. the color, the, you know, he's, he's floating, he's got that going on. Oh, just knows. love it. I know. It's so well cool. done, Stephen. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Oh, Kelsey Schneider yes. sent this one in, uh, got in right before the show today, and I was able to sneak it in. She did this with April, who April is about to turn four. So that's a big deal. This is adorable uh, as i look yeah. at it i i'm not exactly sure which parts kelsey did and which parts april did it's hard hard to tell yeah. but uh, she said uh, yeah. that this uh uh penguin is named sunshine and april was very upset with kelsey because she wasn't following the teacher who was me <laughs> uh, and she also indicated that the green on the penguin itself was a sign that sunshine is a very special penguin. So you know, those little details right. that you can sneak in there, There's right? Different ways you can tell they're special. Yes, I love it. Thank you, Kelsey. That's so cute. Oh, Jill, and this is so adorable. The little blue like shells falling and the speckles. Do you know what? Did like, I? Now that this has happened, what is <sighs> possible? Oh my gosh, I love it. I think uh, so Rachel cute. says it's Alice. I think it must have. I must have mistyped that. I apologize for that. But thank you, uh, yes, thanks for telling. But a name. Yeah. yeah. A. Uh oh. Okay. Let's see. Holy nightmare. <laughs> yeah. It's been a it's been a busy couple of days, but irregardless, the art is amazing. So cute. And Jill, yeah, this is great. She added the quote from from last week. I love the little twirly on top with the bow. Yeah, and again, I like the I like when people bring their own twist to it with the creativity, the cut different colors and things like that. Yeah, so super cool. cool. All right, you guys, meme of the week. This is oh. such a confusing time to be a pirate. <laughs> you There's got so all many these X's everywhere. All these X's of where you're supposed to stand. That's X marks the spot, right? But right. real Don't difficult, dig. real Don't difficult. Dig. Oh, Tracy Miller sent this and cool. uh, thought this was appropriate as we were talking about Marty and the penguins can't fly. She just got this framed, this artwork. It looks sharp. I love uh, that it looks red mat. Great. Yeah, I love that I mat with it. So that is Did super cool. Did you see cool. all the friends on the counter? Yes, there's some <laughs> penguins back there. I think there's actually an original painting back there yeah. of mine that that, um, that she got. I know. And um, yeah, that's it's actually I think that's double matted because it's got the white mat that it came oh, with, yeah. and then she added the red mat and the black frame, and that looks that is really, super really cool. Sharp. Very cool. So Candy sent this in, I think it was a couple weeks ago, wasn't yes. it? Mm -hmm. And she uh, put googly eyes on her printer in the office, <laughs> which then necessitates, as these things do, yeah. one thing leads to another, and it led to the crown and the name tag, Prince, Prince mm -hmm. Charming. Which is what inspired my necklace. Adorable, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, this was gifted to me by an adult I spider. You know who you are, so thank you. And I mean, what... Who enjoys standing at the printer ever? You know, most bad moments of your day happen right in that vicinity because something happens that you weren't expecting with the printer. Mm -hmm. Is it just me? No, I don't think it's Okay. No. <laughs> so what a cool <laughs> idea. Just something so simple to add a little. Yeah, friendly. little things make the biggest difference sometimes, you know. Yeah. And then Donna Cutting, oh, she posted cool. this the other day, and I thought this was cool. So this is our Celebrate Everything calendar. And they, her and her uh, husband, I believe, um, have kind of a different thing they do with it that I really like. It's really cool. She said, this is kind of a cool thing we're doing to remind ourselves that not everything about this year has been horrible. Mm -hmm. Instead of marking future events on our calendar, as most of us do, right, right to keep, a, keep track of what's coming up, mm -hmm. we write our road trips and fun on it after mm -hmm. the fact. For instance, attempted tubing and had s'mores on the porch, Aww. right? Because that's a thing you're not going to... Right. right ahead of time necessarily if right. it's a spontaneous thing mm -hmm. 
or sat on the deck and watched fireflies. Jim highlights them all with colored markers. The idea is that on New Year's Day 2021, we will look back on the year and remember it was not all bad. There was also some good. Calendar by Escape Adulthood. It's our favorite. So, I such a cool idea, love, right? What a cool way to keep memories alive. And a lot of people are like, I never know what to do with the calendar after after the year. It's like, what a cool way to build it in. Is like, this is a little, you know, stack of treasured memories. Yeah, year and you can re look look at them. And it's like, you don't have to write a whole... I've talked about that on, on the blog before, is that one of the things I love doing on our vacations is to, I write a memory list. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not like a whole journal about everything we did, but it's literally a few bullet points of some specific details. Right. You know, like went to Disneyland, we were at Disneyland and Alice in Wonderland did this to Ben or whatever. And it's funny because you just put these little details on it and mm -hmm. just that one it's detail... Yeah. reminds you of everything else of right. the whole day, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, this is kind of a really cool way to do that, that you just kind of jot in some of the fun things that you do. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, built-in scrapbook memories. People love this idea. They're like, yes, yes. A calendar diary, right, Kathy Rose? Yes. I love it. I know. Um, and I know Kara knows Donna. I mean, this it's kind of neat. Donna's been buying the calendar for years. She probably started the year we started it. Um, so it's neat to see how her experience with the calendar has evolved. And Jason was working on the next calendar. Yes, I am working on the next calendar. And actually next week, we're going to have a little sneak peek for you on the making of this year's calendar. So stay tuned for that. I'm excited about that. It's been a, been a bit of a haul, but we're getting there. Um, and then uh, last but not least, wanted to shout out to Leah Rosenberg, who is the August... Go ahead. The August Adultitis Fighter of the Month. And... Uh, Leah has been around in our tribe since I want to say like 2003, four. So she is a big fan of She's, the Kimajiki She goes back shirt. almost all the way. Yeah. And um, we actually met her at a church event that Jason spoke at, one of his first speaking events, probably the, among the first 10 ever um, in Wisconsin here. And so Leah, this is long overdue girl, long overdue. Yes. Yeah, so and this, I love this picture. So adorable of her. It's um, a couple of highlights from her uh, profile that was on our website. Um, we asked, uh, what's the greatest influence in your own fight against adultitis? And she said, lately, my kids, mm. she says, one <laughs> of my children in particular finds so much joy in the little things. Aww. Everything, and I mean everything, seems to excite her. I don't know where she gets that joy from, but I love it. Aww. It's such a reminder to me just to enjoy life and delight in the little things. Mm -hmm. uh, we asked, uh, what is your strategy for dealing with people who are obviously infected with adultitis? I love the answers to these. Such slide. great tips. So she said, what a pertinent question for the times we are in. Right. I listen to what they have to say, and depending where the conversation leads, I try to let it go or show them that there is still good in the world. Mm -hmm. I also... Uh, I also get inspired by great quotes and stories. They help me to maintain hope when much around me seems hopeless. Mm. And then I uh, love this picture. She's at the, with the Hogwarts Express here. So cool. uh, adult, I, we ask what advice she would have for any of us who are feeling overwhelmed with adultitis. She says, adultitis is a mental game. And as Kim and Jason preach, it's all about perspective. I love this. My husband makes fun of me because I often say, could it have gone better? Probably. Could it have gone worse? Yes. Mm -hmm. Again, all about perspective. So don't you love that? Like, could it have gone better? Probably. Right. Could it have gone worse? Yes. <laughs> so that might have to be a new line of ours that we adopt. I love that. Um, and we've gotten to know James. They've come to the summits and Wonder Night. Um, so I can picture them saying that. Very yeah. Clearly. Great advice. Mm -hmm. Great, uh, great tips. Um, Great wisdom from our fellow adultitis fighters. So yeah. thank you to everyone who has submitted things. And uh, yeah, we. I was gonna say something because this okay. is kind of cool. Well, I'll, Leah, I'll allow it. Good, Leah. We gotta play. Yeah, I'm just gonna say you stole it from me. Wow. So Leah um, is a part of a mom's group, and she has asked us to put together Wonder Punch ah. for her mom's group. Which, this is the kind of stuff, you guys, we really can't think of everything. Like, we try to, but our brains literally go to mush, like this Play-Doh, like, when we do. And so, we love getting questions of ideas like that. So, yes, we are putting together Wonder Hunt for her mom's group for exclusive an exclusive cohort 
just for them. That's private just for them. And they'll be starting here in a little bit. And by the way, we're breaking it up into two a week for like, I don't know how many weeks it ends up being, but it's up till Thanksgiving because these moms are busy and they don't want five days a week. They want two days a week. Again, like that creativity mm -hmm. of like breaking rules that don't exist. I'm pointing to the book that you can't see. Um, there you breaking go. rules that don't exist. Can Does it have to be five days a week? No, it doesn't have to. So no. feel free if you have a group that you're interested in possibly, you know, having an experience like this with, let me know and we can kind of set up for you too. Yeah, but we always love feedback. I, I'm always getting um, ideas for products. I know uh, Kara Tracy recently, you requested a holy guacamole shirt in green or yellow. So that's, Ooh, that's uh, cool. these all get filed and they get put on my to-do <laughs> list and, and uh, consideration. But I think that one we're definitely gonna make happen eventually, but. Um, we are pretty religious bullet journalers. So there's nothing that gets lost. It does get put somewhere. Yes. So that's helpful. Looks like uh, Donna showed up a little bit late. She hey. says, did I get a shout out? I'll have to watch the replay. <laughs> yes, Donna, you I did don't... get a shout out. We, uh, we talked about your awesome, and everyone loved it by the way, your, oh my gosh. what you do with the Celebrate Everything calendar, keeping track of your, um, uh, after the fact events yes. uh, and how cool that the is moments sure, to those remember. Memories, so. and what a cool way to make 2020 something to remember in a yeah. positive way which absolutely is awesome all right you guys so today we're going to give away uh we got a giveaway and before i this. say what it is no <laughs> uh the question to enter is if you could turn anything into your life in your life into play-doh what would it be now, the assumption here, I think this is assumed <laughs> that whatever it is, is still functional. So like if okay. you wanted to turn your car into Play-Doh, you would still, it would drive. still drive. Oh, because this is awesome. the land of make-believe. So okay. it that could still be, be functional. Safe. Yeah. It'd be amazingly safe. You think so? Yeah, because you just squish, like you hit and it just all <laughs> squish around you. It's like an airbag all, all the that. way around. All I right. think it'd be amazing. All right. Okay, so we're, give, we're actually giving away. A, a signed copy of Penguins Can't Fly. Is that what we decided And tonight? Marty. And yeah. Marty. Yep. Yeah. And I think I have my answer to this. I think that it would be really, really rad to have Play-Doh hair, just like the Fuzzy Pumper <laughs> barber shop. Wouldn't that be amazing? Well, then I mean, you don't have to worry about it, you know, like get haircuts anymore. You don't have to worry about anything with your hair, which you is a, always a concern. I have to ask my mom for permission. <laughs> I don't know if she'll, she'd allow it, but... You could try. How about you? What would you uh, I, you know, I, I think the car. I think really I think having a car that's uh -huh. made of play doh. Like I picture it being really like round and Rough. you'd sit in it and it'd be like all comfortable cushy. and cushy. Is it yeah. kind of like a VW? Beetle? Yeah, it'd be kind of like a beat. It okay. kind of looked like uh, that's yeah. The reason I think of that too. Like yeah, squished. Yeah, it would, you know what it would look like? It would look like the emoji car. That's in the emoji, uh, like that little squished red car. Okay. That yeah. looks what it would look I could like. I see that. All right. What do we got All right. Here? Let's see. Uh, <laughs> He's the one that writes pa the questions. Can you tell? Oh, my God. Paul says my Mini Cooper. Oh, that's awesome. Helen, my washer and dryer. Oh. My couch. Ooh, that would be cushy. My children. I love that. That would be hilarious. Dorothy, my body. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes I feel parts of my body are play -Doh already. It's yeah. weird kids point that out don't yeah, they? they do <laughs> uh, a swimming pool Kim Ooh, that'd be fun my Fun's kitty miss millie oh miss millie <laughs> my bed yeah that's Ooh, that's pretty that good comfy. um ooh, here's deep oh. lisa says my mind flexible and glow with go with the flow nice. steve okay. steve one ups you he says his hair and beard oh. that would be pretty rad just like this big <laughs> like uh, the the pirates and Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, like that one, like the, black, or, um, Davy Jones. Yes, yeah, right. Uh, Barbosa. Awesome. Um, mm -hmm. What else we got? My house. Beth says nice. like that. Mm -hmm. Another bed. Another bed. Uh, and, uh, we're, uh, they're going fast the bed, and furious. The bed is my good office idea. desk, so I could write cool things on it and then smooth it out and do it again. I like that. I think Mary's winning an award or um, for. The coolest office. She's the one that had the green dinosaur recently. Yes. The di officer or office dinosaur. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what else do we got? Play-Doh kayak. So I can pack it up and take it anywhere. Yes. Right? right? How about this one? A bra. Great support. And perky. Yes. My, like that takes wonder bra to a whole new it. level. Right? Yeah. Do some prototypes. You need, a, you need a couple more cans you need to add in there and big date. Whatever. 
<laughs> Big team. Yeah, baby. Uh, yeah. Wait, no, I was thinking more like. Uh... <laughs> uh, Michelle oh. says an adult sized playground. Ooh. Here, here. Yeah, right. that'd be awesome. Uh, Perwalt, my kayak, another kayak. That's a good idea. That's good. Mm-hmm. Hat. Hat, man. Yeah. Nice, nice. Well, we got some good, good stuff. Ones here. Yeah, keep them and coming. You know you want to play with Play Doh now, so email me, email us at kj at escapeitalhead.com. I'll get you this recipe. It'll be yes. worth it. Yeah, so uh, we will uh, pick a winner shortly after. Oh, by the way, last week's winner yes. of the greeting card assortment was Stephanie Ellen Horak. I believe so uh, yeah. if she's watching we already got her yes, hooked up but yeah yeah so we uh always reach out to the Stephanie. people almost right after yeah. um i think oh one more thing one more little tidbit for anyone who is an escape it all hood insider mm-hmm. i uh fell off the bandwagon the last couple week months uh we with the desktop calendar but uh i put up in the adult itis fighter arsenal a desktop mm-hmm. calendar for september with the uh, cowbell, awesome. the only prescription. And um, you can get that free uh, as an insider, which is free to join. Uh, <laughs> many of you already are. If you are not, check out escapeitallhood.com slash insider. You will get an email and a special private link with the password to the Adult Itis Fighter Arsenal, where we have all sorts of mm-hmm. fun downloads and free things and uh, coloring pages and eBooks and calendar pages like this right yes someone said taco mm. right yeah taco taco yeah i could i think you know you do that roll up like kind of almost what is no it? it's a burrito yeah or an enchilada yeah or i'm thinking of the italian dessert cannoli yeah <laughs> we're playing taboo here okay that must mean it's time to move along all right. Well, thank you guys for joining us tonight. It was a, a pleasure being with you again and sharing some laughs and going back down some memory lane with yes. you. Um, that's it for tonight's show, though. Until next time, Adult Itis Fighters. Shine on, spread whimsy, and be awesome. <laughs>